Okay. There are about a thousand ways to skin a cat when it comes to exposure. Um, I often uh, shoot an aperture priority and spot meter, unless it's uh, something moving or something fluid, or you don't have the time to adjust and spend a tremendous amount of time and forethought. Um, spot metering. So what are you going to do? Are you going to expose for the mid-tone? What are you going to do? What is the lighting situation that you would choose, for example, uh, an outdoor scene with incredible dynamic range, too much dynamic range for your camera perhaps, and uh, DX sensors have less dynamic range, certainly so, um, than a, a full-frame camera, except for the very newest breeds of full-frame cameras, with our, uh, which are full-frame sensors with DX uh, pixel pitches on them. Nikon has kind of gone the other way, as you've noticed, with the new Nikon D500. That's why the Nikon D500 is a 20.9 megapixel camera. It's like, wait a minute, that's the newest camera, and it's only 20.9 megapixels? And it's a $2,000 camera. Why, Nikon's prior uh, DX uh, camera, the D7100 and D7200, which are both the exact same sensor, those are 24 megapixel cameras. Yeah, the pixel pitch is also tighter and smaller on those. The inescapable thing that no camera can uh, escape and no sensor technology can escape, no matter how they change it, is that G over T is an inescapable fact. Gain over time. You have two apertures. You have the one that can't be changed. It's made when the camera's made, and that is the pixel pitch of the photo site. Now, there are certain efficiencies on that that kind of vary from one or the other, and also the uh, signal processing that occurs after the image is captured on the sensor. Remember I said ISO has nothing to do with sensitivity, nor exposure, nor light. It is applied gain. Two apertures. Photosight, DX, full frame. Um, I think it's like 8.4 micrometers on the Nikon D3. You get big honking photosights. It's slightly older technology, obviously, from 2008. Um, but you have less gain over time due to that smaller aperture, the photo sight, on the DX uh, pixel pitch of the uh, DX crop sensor. Unlike another YouTube photographer's commentary, um, uh, a full frame sensor does not gather more light because it is a larger sensor. The size of the sensor doesn't have damn thing to do with anything. It has to do with the size of the photo sights or the countless millions of eyeballs that are on that uh, photo, on uh, that sensor. Uh, in general, things are starting to change now, but in most all cases, uh, DX uh, crop sensors have tiny little eyeball photo sites on them, and full frame sensors have larger eyeballs on them. They keep things really, really simple. Um, for example, um, the dynamic range. DX sensors have foreshortened dynamic ranges. The noise levels produced for example, on a micro four-thirds sensor, that ISO 800 is the rough equivalent of uh, that produced by an average DX sensor at ISO 1600. And that produced uh, by a full-frame sensor uh, with roughly four times the area of the fourth or micro four-thirds at ISO 3200. So um, as far as the dynamic range is concerned, micro four-thirds dynamic range at ISO 100 equals a DX crop sensor at ISO 1600 equals a full-frame sensor at 3200. Now those are rough equivalents. Obviously it's not for every camera. Full-frame sensors can dig deeper as far as the noise floor given the same G over T. You have two, th uh, two different identical cameras. And, uh, you know, they're both set at ISO 400. Both have the exact same lens on it. Exact same lens. Say, uh, F8 at 1 one hundredth of a second. So you have uh, three fixed things there. F8 at 1 one hundredth of a second on two different cameras, full frame and DX, uh, at ISO 200 or 400, whatever it is. The gain over time is less on the DX crop sensor than it is on the full frame sensor. Gain over time. That means the dynamic range is less. I stop and a half, and in some cases uh, almost two stops. Um, like on the, the larger photo site pixel pictures of the Nikon D4, D3, not the D810, which is an intermediate range of pixel pitch. Um, the new D500 the DX uh, camera flagship that is Nikon's rolling out is 4.2 micrometer 
pixel pitch. And the Nikon D7100, D7200 is 3.8, I believe, or 3.92 micrometers. So it's significantly smaller. Um, so D DX sensors have a foreshort and dynamic range. So the inescapable thing that people won't tell you is a G over T. Gain over time is an irre... Ir uh, you know... Uh, I was going to say irreducible. That's not the word. I mean, it's an inescapable, excuse me. I've uh, been up uh, too late reading on the computer. She stops uh, sitting at the computer until like 5 in the morning. Um, so G over T. Why does nobody talk about stuff like this? Gain over time. G over T. Um, on metering again, uh, back to metering. What would you do on not this particular scene of this uh, cute chick in a fuzzy bunny outfit? Or that one, or that sort of freaky nonsense. Excuse me, let's get out of the craziness here. There we go. There's some craziness. Um, <laughs> not that one either. That was... Uh, what would you do as so far as spot metering? You came up to the kitty cat. I thought that's where I was uh, coming at. Spot metering. Would you actually, uh, since you uh, the white of the fur of the kitty cat is not 18% gray, this would be like an 18% midtone. What would you do? What's the dynamic range of the scene? I mean, here's the question to ask yourself, and I would have you answer it, and uh, you should go out there and test it and look at the results. Don't, when you just have the answer in your head, if someone gives you an answer, it doesn't really help you any. I mean, it's like, well, it does. It's like, well, you told me the answer. It's like, well, that's good, but do you really understand it? Do you know it firsthand? So here's the question that you should go ask yourself. Just go outside. It'll take you five minutes. Um, expose, put your camera in spot meter, whether it's a Fuji, Nikon, or Canon. Exposed for a highlight on something with significant dynamic range, much more dynamic range than it is in this kitty picture. Uh, spot meter for the white highlights, and then uh, overexpose, set your compensation for like a plus two and a half stops, plus three stops. Okay? So set your exposure comp from plus two and a half, then plus three, take a couple shots that way. Spot metering for the highlights. Then drop the compensation to zero, zero uh, compensation for exposure, no flash photography, just keep things simple. Expose for the midtones. Check the results either on the back of your LCD screen or on your computer and tell me what is the case that you think you could figure out on a scene that has either low dynamic range like this. This is the kitty cat. There's like about five stops of value. Uh, the zone system is actually rather important. Everybody should study the zone system. People think it has only to do with film photography. Well, that's bull crap. Everybody should study the zone system. I'm looking at about uh, not six stops. Uh, between uh, the the highlights and uh, the shadows on this. I mean, this is a pretty flat shot as far as uh, illumination is concerned. Uh, the spectrum of EV. Um, so what would you uh, expose for on this? Do you think that you just uh, expose your midtones and spot metering? And what about a high dynamic scene, like an outdoor uh, scene where you've got some really harsh uh, uh, specular uh, highlights and some really uh, deep shadows? Would you then on that high dynamic range shot, would you spot meter for the highlights with your exposure set to say plus two and a half or plus three stops. So you're highlighting for the specular and then you're overexposing. See, remember, if you're going to expose for and take the shot based upon your highlight at spot metering and overexposing by two and a half to three stops, how do you think the shot will turn out? So what would you do given the dynamic range of the composition that you want to take. Instead of giving someone the answer, it's going to take you five minutes to figure out. Take an indoor shot where you've got, you know, six stops of a dynamic range, five and a half, six stops, and then take one outdoors in bright sunlight. So that is going to tell you something really important because you're going to need to start spot metering, at least at the very least start seeing the dynamic range and start seeing what are the midtones, what are the speculars, and what are the shadows and you're seeing what to expose for is if you're not looking at light all the time then your photography is going to suffer you'll start to see things like if I were to take a shot of this this shot's got like 12 stops of dynamic range this shot's got six stops of dynamic range I would expose for that and I was going you know, when you start thinking like that man that's when the butter and honey starts rolling out and things get really easy very fast I mean, you got to take my word for that because that's absolutely undeniable. Anyway, sorry to take up so much of your time. I might have flapped my lips too much on this video, but it was still an important video. So, thanks for watching. Catch you later.